Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, and I'd like to welcome you to the Daily Compliance News. The Daily Compliance News is an offering of the Compliance Podcast Network. August 19, 2019, the Opioid Memo Edition. First up, once again, we see regime change bringing another former country's leader into disrepute. Omar al-Bashir, the former president of Sudan, will appear in court Monday for the first day of a high-profile corruption trial that could end the deposed autocratic ruler uh, or, or lead him being in jail for many years. Bashir was forced out this past April when security forces withdrew their support. And now the corruption bank has come to uh, levy its cost for the years of not only despotic rule, but corruption. So uh, if they're going after the leader, you can bet the companies that did business with him will do uh, be next. So if you've been doing business there, you may want to check it out. Next up, over the weekend from the Wall Street Journal, uh, are reports that President Trump is interested in purchasing Greenland. Uh, he thinks it would be a nice, end quote, that's quote nice, end quote, for the United States to do it. And it's just a large real estate deal. Um, what could go wrong? So no word on what the people of Greenland uh, might think about this. Of course, uh, they probably didn't know they were for sale and their country was for sale. Um, they may want to look at Puerto Rico to see how Trump treats um properties obtained by the United States that are not states of the United States, or perhaps even they would want to look at states that um, voted blue and see how he treats them. Nevertheless, uh, Trump seems determined to move forward to on this as uh, he views this as one of his legacy deals. So no doubt more to come. The opioid crisis raises its ugly head in a very ugly way uh, with the leak of the confidential government document containing so much evidence against the pharmaceutical companies that it may actually change the course of opioid production. The document known, uh, this comes from the New York Times, as the prosecution memo details how lawyers, government lawyers believe that Purdue Pharma uh, knew early on that uh, Oxycontin was fueling a rise rise in abuse and addiction. They gathered evidence indicating that the company's executives not only misled the public, but uh, misled Congress. Uh, it is The story was broken by a show called The Weekly, which appears on Hulu. Uh, it uh, premiered uh, last night. It um, features Paul Pelletier, who speaks on the record for the first time uh, about the decision 12 years ago not to pursue felony charges against uh, Purdue Pharma, and he tells uh, the story that he first learned about a closed-door meeting the justice uh, officials had with Purdue Pharma's lawyers when he was one of the prosecutors uh, on the case and how he angrily protested that meeting. And finally, we have a story from our friend Francine McKenna over at Market Watch, and she takes a look at five things to know about WeWork going public. The uh, company has never made a profit. It has already cashed out, the CEO has cashed out large sums. Uh, In many ways, WeWork works like a bank. And of course, the potential conflicts of interest as a large number of leases are held by the uh, CEO. And finally, of course, is the control by the uh, CEO and his wife, uh, even after their death when their heirs will Uh, take keep control of the company so you may want to think twice about investing in WeWork particularly given its business model going forward on Sunday of this week I ended my 79 part exploration of Star Trek the original series and its intersection with compliance I hope you'll go back and check out some of the past episodes I'm in production of a couple of other new series and this week we have another entry in adventures in compliance Daily Compliance News is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network and a proud member of C-Suite Radio. 